Hi everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little Halloween card using some stamps by Lawn Fawn. I use the Costume Party and Pick of the Patch stamp sets to create this cute little pumpkin patch with some little children peeking out from amongst the pumpkins towards the front of the scene. And then behind them, we're going to go ahead and make our very own handmade Copic background with a bunch of Copic markers in some yellow, orange, and brown tones. And we're gonna create this lovely late autumn scene with these little children hanging out in a pumpkin patch. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start by drawing a line to separate where the land ends and the sky begins. And then we are going to stamp in our little pumpkin patch with the little children peeking out from amongst the pumpkins, and we're going to mask the images as we go along. So I masked it so that the little boy with the pumpkin suit is standing in the front row, and then his two little friends on either side of him are gonna be concealed partially by the pumpkins. So I wanted it to look like they're right in the middle of the pumpkin patch surrounded by a whole bunch of pumpkins. So let's just finish masking off our scene and then we will get started with our Copic background. So the first image that we're going to paint in is gonna be the little house um, that is on the right side of the screen. And I'm using an E41 marker to sketch it in and to um, fill in the chimney. Then we're gonna take an E40 marker and we're going to color in the entire face of the little building. Now comes the fun part. We are going to draw a whole bunch of little pumpkins and the pumpkins are going to surround the house and they're going to spill out into the yard next to the house and they're going to spill all the way forward towards the front of the scene so that they are almost touching the little children in the foreground of the painting. So to make the pumpkins, I just started sketching in little dots and little ovals using an orange and then a gold marker. And I just kind of staggered them a little bit so that we had pops of you know, yellow throughout so that the image would be interesting. And so it wouldn't just be a whole bunch of the same colored pumpkins sticking around. Now we're gonna add a little bit of shading to the pumpkins and I'm using a darker orange marker to go over the pumpkins that I had laid down with my orange marker. And for the pumpkins in the background, I'm just kind of putting a little bit of shading off to one side. For the pumpkins that are larger and towards the front, I'm trying to draw in the little grooves or the ribs on the pumpkins themselves since they're closer to us and we would be able to see more of the details on those pumpkins. For the pumpkins that I colored in gold initially. I'm just gonna add my shading with a darker gold marker. And I did kind of the same thing where I just put a little bit of shading off to one side for the tiny little pumpkins that are all the way in the back of the scene. And then I gave some more detail to the larger pumpkins and the ones that are closer to the forefront. Now we're gonna draw some little stems on the pumpkins. And I used two different color browns here, a light brown and a dark brown and I'm just adding a tiny little stem to each of the pumpkins. And as you can see, that really um, kind of makes them come alive, right? And look like, and look like they're pumpkins. So now we're going to draw in our tree and this is a really, really big tree. And I'm using an E23 marker to, um, to just do my initial layer. Whenever I do an initial layer for an image, I like to use a a pretty light marker. Sometimes it's because if I make a mistake, I wanna have the ability to cover it over with um, some other markers later. And sometimes it's because I want to leave a little bit of a highlight on the image by the time I'm done adding all my darker layers. In this instance, it was because I wanted to leave the highlight. I am now going over the whole tree with an E27 and I just kind of, um, made some little stripes along the trunk so that it would resemble bark. And I added a whole bunch of little twiggy type branches to the edges of my tree branches. 
um, because we're going to put in a lot of leaves later and I thought it would be more realistic if we had all these little twig like branches jutting out. I'm adding some um, darker shadowing with an E49 marker towards the bottom of the tree and now I am going to draw in the stones for our little house in the background and I'm just setting out the initial or the base coat for the stones with an E43 and then I'm going to fill in that whole chimney with an E43 marker and add some stones with an E44. For the shading on the little stones on our building I'm using an E44 marker and I'm going to add the shading so that it goes along the top but then also touches a little bit on the right side of each stone and I've just found that putting the shading in this way having it a little bit uneven makes the image more interesting to look at than if you just had it like on the side or on the top or on the bottom if the um, if the shading bends a little it tends to I, I like how that looks for the roof we're going to fill in our roof with an e44 and then we're going to add a line at the base of the roof with an E49 to make it look like there's a ledge that is um, so that the, the roof is protruding beyond that ledge. And now I'm just adding some shading to the house and I am trying to blend the colors of the stone together so that it's not so stark looking. I'm adding some darker stems to some of the pumpkins um, so that they don't get lost in the rest of the painting with all the dark colors of the the house in front of them. We're going to make the doorway using E44 and then E49 on the very inside to give the appearance that there's depth in the house. We're going to give this cobblestone house a really, really old weather beaten wooden door. And to do that, I'm just using a bunch of different brown Copic markers and I'm just leaving little stripes so that it just looks like, you know, it's a piece of wood that's really been around for a long time and has maybe seen a lot of a lot of autumns, a lot of Halloweens, and um, then we're gonna add some more shading to the house. I did some dark shading along the bottom because I thought maybe this is an old house and maybe it's a little bit discolored on the bottom. Maybe the autumn sun is hitting it in such a way that the stones towards the bottom look a little darker. So that's kind of what I was the thought that was going through my mind as I was adding the shading to the house. For the sky, I'm using B90, which is a greenish gray, and I wanted to create the look of one of those late fall afternoons where it's just kind of misty and gray out. And behind the pumpkins, I used a B93 to just add some pumpkin shadows behind the pumpkins, so it appears as though there's a like a whole army of pumpkins that go back forever and ever behind the house. I also added some B10 to the sky just to brighten it up a little. And I am now filling in the leaves on our tree with like a lightish yellow, a darker yellow, almost an yellowish orange. And then we're gonna put in a darker gold. And our tree, it's, it's late autumn here. So our tree is mostly turned. There's no green leaves left. It's just all, um, all yellow and gold and, and ready to just fall to the floor. For the ground, I'm using the same colors I use for the house. I'm using E43, E44. And then right in the middle, I'm gonna add some BG10 just to brighten things up a little bit and to have it match the sky just, just a little bit. I'm adding my shadows and now I'm gonna add some shadows underneath the pumpkins. And then we're going to add a little bit more of a darker shadow with an E44. And then we are going to blend all that together with an E43. So now our background scene is set. We have like a lovely late fall afternoon in a pumpkin patch and we have all these cute little lawn fawn kids hanging out um, in the pumpkin patch. So for the little kids, um, I use three different color combinations for the skin tones just so that they all look different. And for the little 
boys pumpkin costume. I'm going to use my brightest oranges on that costume, which are the YR02 um, to YR09. Then we're going to work on his hair with some E20s. And there's not a lot of space to do this, so I just did the best that I could and just wanted to create the look of a little boy with straight hair. <laughs> Um, for the witch, we're going to give her a reddish brown hair. So I use some more red tone browns for that. We're going to use some cool grays for her witch's costume so that it appears as though it's black. And I'm going to focus the shading towards the bottom part of her body because she's kind of sticking out of the pumpkin patch. So we can assume that she's going to be mostly obscured by the shadows except for her little shoulders and her little hat that's sticking out and then maybe they catch a little bit a little bit of the sun for the mummy i kept the coloring pretty simple and i just used a w5 that i traced along the edges of his bandages and then blended it together with a w1 for the pumpkins we're going to do a combination of gold pumpkins and light orange pumpkins and dark orange pumpkins and i'm using all the same colors that we use for the pumpkins towards the back of the painting, but I'm just kind of using different, different combinations of, of those markers for the pumpkins. And I'm trying to um, draw in the ridges or the ribs on the pumpkins as well because they're in the foreground, so we would be able to see a lot of the detail on those pumpkins, so I tried to make them more detailed than the pumpkins that are in the back. And in terms of like how I chose the colors, I just kind of did what felt right. So I was like, okay, let's do a little, an, an orange pumpkin over here, a dark orange pumpkin over there. Let's see what happens if we just lay down our base coat with a really bright yellow and cover, color over it with the oranges. How, how will that look? And I like that look. It, gave, it gives the appearance of a very bright pumpkin um, when you put the, the, the bright yellow as the base coat. And that is it for the coloring. And this is my favorite part of making a Copic painting is peeling that blue painter's tape off. And then we're going to put everything in the Misty, use a sentiment from the Lawn Fawn costume party stamp set that says Happy Halloween. And I use black VersaFine ink on the sentiment. And that is it for this card. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, everyone. I hope you give this scene a try. It's a lot of fun to put together. And if you would like a chance to win this Copic painting, I am raffling it off on my Instagram channel. So just head over to that channel. It's the site that's listed above. And leave me a comment on the post for this card to enter. The winners will be announced on Instagram on October 21st. Thanks a lot and have a great day and I will see you in the next video.